Okay, here we go, World of Tanks, and I'm driving my T28 tank destroyer again. Um, anyway, uh, let's take a look, quick look at the XVM and see what it has to say. We're a very slight underdog, although to be honest, I consider anything in the 45 to 55 percent range uh, to be, you know, pretty much equal odds. Uh, but anyway, it's a, as you can see though, it's a very tier eight game. About half of each team's tier eight, a uh, handful of tier uh, sevens and sixes on each side, so. Uh, we're off. So, T28 uh, on cliff. No artillery, which is going to be very important. And basically at this point, I'm sitting here trying to decide exactly uh, what I want to do. Now, the, the nice thing about T28 is it's got a pretty good hard-hitting gun. And uh, thank you uh, to, uh, what was that, DSM 2004? But that's not really going to help. Uh, so anyway, it's got a hard-hitting gun, um, reasonably good armor, and uh, uh, it's reasonably reasonably accurate at mid-ranges. But uh, one of the best things about it is it uh, aims very, very quickly. And uh, as you can see here, pointed that way, put a big hit on the Centurion, and I'm getting ready to put another one on him. Yep, and average damage on this gun is 400, so oh, 777 damage rolled, you know, quite a bit under uh, average. So anyway, uh, I got the, uh, the heavy tank uh, number 6 there with me, and given his armor in a tier 8 match, I think he's probably made the, ro the uh, right choice by sitting here. Now, the question, though, really at this point is, as a T28, as a top tier well, a good, uh, fairly well-armored top-tier uh, uh, tank destroyer. Should I be sitting back here and sniping, or should I be moving up? Now, there's an R.H. Impson out in front of me, and he's certainly a sniper. Uh, you know. So anyway, we've got the, the Panzer 58 Mutts out there, and I'm trying to line a shot up on him. I should have maybe pulled the trigger hair earlier, but uh, he manages to get away, and, uh, but not until my team is has taken away about three quarters of his health. So, should I be sitting back here is the question. And really, the um, the answer is not as obvious as you might think it is. The T-28 doesn't, you know, it can't really flex. It's not very flexible. In other words, if you commit, uh, given the, your top speed, and uh, it's got a top speed that makes a you know it makes an AT series tank uh, look like a racehorse. Uh, it's very uh, it's very slow to get back. So we'll leave it at that for now. So uh, anyway, I, I pinged the map to try to get some attention on that mutts. Although the the Patton KR is probably worried about that T twenty uh, that E twenty five on the hill shooting him in the back. And um, anyway, I try to get a li shot lined up. Ah, there we go. He finally got him. So, and I'm trying to get a shot lined up with the T25 too. And now this tiger pops out, and I aim in and just a tracking shot. That's all I get. That's okay. Uh, and it looks like the guys on the right hand side of the map are doing okay. We're doing okay. And I'm looking for something to shoot at, and I just can't get an angle or on anything back here. Uh, so, is that CDC going to pop out? No. So. Now, again, at this point, I'm kind of concerned about the guys on the far right-hand side of the map, but I take a look over there, and I see our E25 flanking, and we've got half a dozen tanks versus two over there. And I'm thinking, all right, yeah, hey, that side's got it under control. Let's get, let's go ahead and push on this side and kind of and see what I can do over here to, you know, break the stalemate uh, on the uh, on the TD alley over here. So start pushing up. And again, I'm keeping an eye on the back on, on the map. And well, the T25, the E, sorry, the E25 got killed by the uh, AC48. And the Patton KR now knows the AC48's out there. But he's also got to deal with the T37. There's a T25 2 in front of me. And oh, okay, hey, this will work. Plenty of stuff sitting out in the open for me to shoot at. So let's start with uh, this heavy tank number six out here. Yeah, just uh, all I do is manage to finish him off. So CDC, I don't really have a shot on, but I know roughly where he's at, and I'm thinking eh, it might be worth taking a blind shot, but I don't know if that hit or not. I would have to double check. 
So now I'm looking for a shot on, well, pretty much anything. Okay, and I, I finally bounce a hit. Somebody finally spots me. Ah, okay. Tagger. Nope. Shot went wide. But he pulls right back out in front of me, and now somebody else has tracked him. And I'm aiming for right where I think his tracks are going to be, and I'm, I'm sure I'm punching shots right through his drive wheel. At this point, this tiger is in pretty bad straits, and yep, I finish him off. So, turn right, and should not have done that. I'm pretty sure that was the CDC who hit me. If it wasn't the CDC, maybe it was the T25-2. And I go ahead and auto-aim at the T25-2, and I shoot right as he disappears. And if I'd been actually zoomed in on there, I m might have gotten the hit. Might not have. But at that point, I was more interested in taking care of the T25-2 just as quickly, as efficiently as possible. So, I see the minimap is in bad shape. We uh, The enemy team has, has pulled the scores back, and we just lost another one. And sure enough, uh, it looks like the bad guys are coming around to flank, and here comes a charioteer, and I put a shot into him, set him on fire! So I need to, you know, I need to help out this, help out our friendly uh, T-25-2. So go ahead and auto-aim, but he's, the charioteer is smart enough, he gets around him a little bit, and I needed, yeah, you can make the argument again that, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have auto-aimed, you know, maybe I should have taken the shot quicker. I don't know if it would have helped or not. I, I just don't know at that point. You know, it would take somebody with a bit more experience than me. Okay, a T-34 comes around the corner, catches me by surprise. I did not think he was going to be there, but I line up a shot, put it to his cup, and uh, he's, he's down, and then I take a hit from the CDC. I don't have time for this. I've got to get back and make sure Cap is taken care of. Um, unfortunately, that AMX is on full health. So anyway, I'm driving away from the CDC, and I'm making sure I have that rock between me and him. And uh, I'm the only one that's even in a position to deal with this uh, AMX. Our E25 that was on the base, so was AFK. S get off a good snapshot. And the, the AMX at this point does a bone-hitted play, in my opinion. Yeah, he just drives up in front of me instead of staying down low where I can't hit him. So, at this point, let's pause it for a second. What do I do? It's me and our our HT number six there. There's an AMX CDC uh, behind us somewhere. There's an AMX AC-48 cap in the base. There's an IS-2 camping, maybe defending the enemy base. So the question is, what do I do? So I think about it for a few seconds, and I'm like, well, at this point, the only way we're going to win this is if I get in there and reset the base. Now, you could make the argument that I should have gone the long way around, but I ping the map to give the HT number 6 a heads up. And unfortunately, I'm pinging it a little too late because the AMX does get him in an ambush. So now I'm thinking, all right, where is this CDC going to come out at? Is he going to come up over the top or is he going to come around? So at this point, I'm thinking, crap, maybe I should have gone the long way around, but I don't know if I would have had the view range to get the spot. So I make a right hand turn. And I'm expect I'm watching this way because I'm expecting the CDC to show up anytime, and there he is. And he's going to get a good hit on me. Sets me on fire. That's all right. Fire extinguisher. Auto aim. Ammo rack. Yes. And then the AMX AC does exactly the right thing. He pops over and puts a round into me. And now I'm down to uh, well, well, basically uh, one shot status for that guy. And he pops up again, and I don't know what he was thinking, because he overextended himself and came down off the ridge. So, lucky? Hell yeah, I was lucky. So, um, now, what do I do? Well, I'm looking at the looking at everything on here. I, all we got is left is the enemy IS-2. He is not a very experienced player. Uh, I don't think he can one-shot me. <laughs> Not that it matters that much, but I end up bouncing uh, uh, bouncing my first shot off of him. So, now, here, 
I was just about ready to take the snapshot, but uh, uh, he pulled back just in time. So at this point, I need to try to line something up. But I need to keep him spotted as well. Now, I'm not worried about him flanking me because he just he just won't have the speed to do it. Uh, if he tries running out in front of me, uh, I can rotate fast enough to keep him... Probably rotate fast enough to keep him uh, keep him lit. But on the other hand, I want to know where he's at because he could back up straight away from this rock and maybe, maybe not get clear. But instead... Yeah... Uh, another miss. No, no worries. A lot of time left, so I'm not worried about time at this point. But what I want him to do is commit and make the mistake, and there he goes. And I lined that one up center mass, and he hits me. I don't know if it was, uh, I don't know if it was HE. No, it was an AP. No damage. So now, that's what I should have done the first time, was tracked him. And I'm wiggling a little, just a little bit, to try to throw his aim off. And that's it. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I should not have won that, um, in all honesty, but you know what? I'm going to take it. So with that, let's take a quick look at the, um, at the post-game stats, shall we? Okay, here we go, and I picked up a, uh, well, a plethora of medals, if you will. Uh, anyway, obviously, Top Gun and a Radley Walters medal for the 8th kill. Uh, high caliber, and I'll, you know, I'll come back to that here in a moment. Uh, shell proof, Fire for Effect, Duelist, and here's the fun ones. Demo Expert, got the ammo rack, uh, a bruiser, and then I burned down the charioteer as well. And of course, that was an ace tanker badge. So overall, not too bad. I bounced a lot of shots, but let's uh, let's go in and take a closer look at how things went. Uh, 1,568 base experience, not too bad. And uh, you know, give it. Uh, let's give it up to the T34 and the enemy team. He did a, a reasonably good job, over 3,000 damage, a couple of kills. Uh, the AMX uh, AC certainly uh, did a reasonable job, reasonably good job. So did the uh, CDC. But uh, at the end of the match, when it really came down to it, uh, I don't think they coordinated their efforts as well as they could have. Maybe there were, I got a lucky bounce in there. You know, if the, if the IS-2 had been in there, it probably would have been completely different. But, uh, again, looking back on it, I, I definitely went the wrong way. I probably should have taken the long way around. That way, when the CDC popped up, um, uh, you know, I would have had, you know, a high advantage on him. And maybe I could have spotted the AMX and gotten, gotten shots on him in a, bit, in a much more safe manner. So, you know, either way. So, but anyway, uh, take a look at here. Fire 22 shots, 18 hit. Uh, 16 of those shots actually penetrated. And here's the heartbreaker, 5,733 damage. If I'd only had one more hit on a reasonably full health target, um, I might have got TD-15-3 completed. But anyway, uh, Dieter did, again, a reasonable job of sniping. Took 10 hits, uh, 4, four damaging hits. Uh, blocked almost 2,000 damage. Sorry about that. And, um, yeah, there we go. Um, blocked, uh, or excuse me, uh, damaged nine vehicles, destroyed eight. And, um, yeah, overall, not really a very bad match. Um, you know, no real complaints. So, T28, uh, it's not that good of a TD. Uh, uh, or at least, you know, I, I think I think the British TDs do this do the same job. They do it a little bit better, uh, simply because they're a little bit faster, which means they're a little more flexible. Okay, uh, not sure what quite happened there. Uh, anyway, the because uh, the audio dropped out. But anyway, um, yeah, I was saying the British TDs are a little bit more flexible because they're a little bit more faster. The T28, I mean, certainly got the armor, uh, certainly got the good gun, but it's so slow that it just can't react very well to what's going on out there. So, um, but you know what? Like I said, overall, no real complaints. I mean, I won a tough, uh, tough match, uh, although I don't think I should have at the end. So, um, you know, let me know what you think, and um, guess that's it. Talk to you later. Bye.